you think about GDAP setup as turning on the lantern, right? Making sure that the light is shining and you can see the things you need to see. We'll talk about deployment, which our partners have talked about as uh, pointing the light, calibrating it, making sure that that light sees what it needs to see, and then alerts, setting the alarm so that when it sees a risk, when it sees a threat, when it sees anything that you decided is really strategically important to you or your customers, it will let the right people know about it the right way so you can take the action you want to take to keep your customers healthy and secure. So maybe big picture, we can think about it in that way. Get to the lighthouse with onboarding, turn on the light with GDAP, point it with deployment, set the alarms with alerts, and then you're able to sit back and monitor and your time is much uh, better spent. You've got the signal then instead of the noise. So we start with GDAP. And what's really cool about GDAP, for those of you who haven't dug in here yet, and again, quick show of hands, we're all friends. How many of us are like all in with GDAP? How many of us um, have set up GDAP for a substantial portion of our customers? Very cool. That's awesome to see. Very cool. So it looks like there's more people who have dug into GDAP than have dug into Lighthouse, which is interesting because one of the key differences in Lighthouse is that Lighthouse allows you to create GDAP templates, right? So if you've set up GDAP for all those customers one by one in Partner Center, that's great. You're doing a great job to protect yourself, protect your customers, their users, their devices, their data. We applaud that. Um, we want to make your job easier by allowing you to go into the GDAP setup wizard that you see here and create templates so that instead of doing it one by one, if you have a pretty strong uh, strategy in place for who you want to have access to what workloads for which customers at what times, this will allow you to set that up by either taking advantage of the templates that we've developed in partnership with partners like yourself or to customize it, choose your own adventure, and create a template that you can then apply to your different customers so that you've got the lighthouse turned on. In a lot of scenarios where I've heard partners talk about uh, something they didn't think was working in lighthouse or something they wish lighthouse would do differently, as often as not, it's that a customer didn't have the permissions they needed for lighthouse to show them the thing they wanted to see. So what they thought was lighthouse not working was GDAP actually working. Um, but I realize I've got a bit ahead of myself here because you actually have Taylor from my team on the call who is our uh, PM for GDAP. And so I'll leave it to her to uh, correct anything I've gotten wrong and fill in some blanks to make sure everybody on this call feels really good about what GDAP is and where we're going with it and how we're setting you up for success. So Taylor, the floor is yours. Thanks, Kyle. I'll do a quick walkthrough of the GDAP setup tool to show folks how you can use it. And just by a show of hands, how many folks on the call have used the GDAP setup wizard or tried to use it? All right, a good, good number of folks. So there's some people who are familiar with it. Just pulling it up. So to access the GDAP setup wizard, which is where you can go to create GDAP relationships with your customers, we've got a home page card on the front page, on the home page, which is called GDAP setup. Um, right now we're in a test environment, so in this example, we see that we actually have four customers that don't have a GDAP relationship. And so I'll just walk through how you can use the setup wizard to create GDAP relationships. And like Kyle mentioned, GDAP templates, which is something different than how um, maybe if you've tried creating GDAP relationships in Partner Center, how it's a little bit different. So what you first do is you click into the tool. It'll give you an overview about what GDAP is and why Microsoft uses it. It's so that we can work towards having least privileged management and just better security overall for our customers. Then you click next. Now what we do to start out with the GDAP setup wizard is we start by defining our roles and permissions. And this part may be a little bit different in terms of how it's organized again compared with Partner Center. On the left hand side, you'll see a list of all of the different Microsoft Entra ID admin rules that are available. And so there's a whole list and they're in alphabetical order. And then for our columns, we've got something called support roles, which is what Lighthouse has defined as almost like different tiers. So you could almost think about them as like similar to maybe let's say tier one, tier two, tier three, whereas you're moving from left to right in this um, table, you're going to be granting users with higher privileged roles. So we will give you an example, like the account manager 
they only have a few roles like license administrator, message center reader. And then as you move more to the right, we get to like the escalation engineer. They're going to have more of the admin roles where, again, it's not quite global admin, but they're going to be able to have more capabilities and functionalities um, in the customer tenants. And then the last tier two also, or what we call support role is JIT agent. And these are roles that require JIT access. So when a user is granted this role, they'd only have it for a certain amount of time. What we recommend is that you, you can actually click this button called adopt recommended roles. And this is what Microsoft recommends as what each uh, support role should have in terms of all the different onto roles. Or if you've got a more, you know, a clearer vision of what's best for your organization, you can go ahead and like uncheck, uncheck boxes based off of what you need. Um, another thing too, if you want to rename any of the support roles, let's say like you, you don't call them this, maybe you call it something else like tier one, tier two, you can also click edit support roles and go ahead and click on the name, change the name, change the description so that it fits your organization's needs. Any questions about rules and permissions? One of the chat questions um, that I got in was, so essentially what you're saying from this layout is this is how an MSP would define when they go to hire a level one or a level two tech or a level three tech. Like these are the, these are the buckets that are back, in, which is role-based access control, is essentially saying this is how Microsoft is seeing those roles. And if you want, use our names or go ahead and call them the exact names in your job description. Yep. Or go ahead and change them based off right. of what makes sense for you. Then. You click next after you do that. And this is the what Kyle was mentioning too with GDAP templates. So GDAP templates allow you to, as you've already done, to find the support roles and then also assign. So sorry, let me back up for a second. So when you create a GDAP template, what you can do is you can give it a name and you can select the support roles that we had just kind of defined previously and create a specific template for it. And what we're going to do is we can assign these templates to specific customer tenants later. But let's say in this example, we're in this test tenant, we've got pod A customers. This could be any grouping based off of how you define it. We want all one, two, three, four, five support roles available for that support roles available. So we can go ahead and check all of them and save it. You could add a description if you'd like. And that's your template basically. And then what will happen next is we'll click next and we'll come to the security group section. So for every support role that you've defined for your template, you'll be asked to create a specific security group. So for example, in our pod A customers GDAP template for the account manager support role, we've assigned this security group called pod A account managers. And then we've also assigned a few users to that security group too. And you'll do this for all of the support roles in your GDAP template. Taylor, if I, if yes. I could, yeah, if I could for a minute, one of the things mm -hmm. that's really tripped up some of our MSPs is, it is something to remember about when Taylor is showing you about creating these security groups, they're being created in your tenant, right? So these are gonna live in your instance of Entra ID, that's where you'll find them. And basically you're saying, hey, these groups are gonna contain the people that I want to be able to do these things. And in the future to manage those groups, all you need to do is reference your own tenant instance of groups and change users in and out there. So I've had a lot of partners that have been confused and said, well, I've created this group, but I can't find it in my customer tenant. And that's because you're creating groups in your own tenant. Yes, that's a great clarification. So you can also, if you wanna go into the Entra admin portal, you could also view all of the security groups you create in Lighthouse there too and manage them there as well. It just takes a little time for <laughs> us to load. Um, and we would do the same thing for every GDAP template that we create. So like we saw before, we had created one for pod A customers and for pod B. So we'd go through the same process for pod B customers. So a question I have, because this might trip up some partners in the future, if you're going through this GDAP setup wizard and you already have previous security groups, will mm -hmm. you click through, click through those previous groups every time? Yes, in this current okay. experience, yes, you will. And the way that it's designed when you're clicking, let's say you've 
already set up a template, you've already assigned a template to a customer tenant and created GDAP relationships with customer number one. If you go through the setup wizard again, because you want to create GDAP relationships for customer number two, it's not going to change any of your GDAP relationships for customer number one. It'll just create the new relationships for customer number two. Bob? Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to press forward to. So after you've again defined the roles and permissions, created your GDAP templates, defined your security groups for each support role, then what this wizard will prompt you to do is to select the customer tenants that you want to assign the GDAP templates to. And again, by assigning that GDAP template, you'll be requesting from that customer those specific roles and permissions defined by each support role. So in this example, we've already selected a couple. We've also, I mean, <laughs> in this example, we've already uh, technically requested the relationships, but I'll just show you. You would do this for all of your templates. And so for pod B customers, you again, you could select the different customer tenants that you want to assign the GDAP template to. And then on the final step, it's going to give you like a list and overview, just an overview of what you're trying to do. Then when you click finish, it'll show you which of your GDAP relationships with your customers are already active and also which of them require sending an admin relationship request. So when you need to do that, you can click on that hyperlink. You can copy paste the request here and send it over here to customer so that they can approve the relationship. So much like we used to approve those GDAP templates, that admin relationship link is essentially the same look and feel as you would do previously, but now it's going to include all of those different RBAC roles that you've selected without you having to do the additional labor there. So if for any reason Lighthouse can't do it for you automatically, that's what, what Taylor's showing you. This is what will come up. And if you notice, that template should look eerily familiar from back in the day, even when you used to do J uh, uh, DAP. Taylor, was there anything else you wanted to cover on GDAP, or should I take us back into a broader lighthouse? That's it. And also, um, if there are folks on the call who are like, ooh, this isn't, you know, how do we go about with the ongoing management portion? Like David mentioned, we are working that on that as a team. We just haven't haven't released that updated experience quite yet. But and we'll if you are an MSP, thing. and if I'm speaking out of turn, Taylor, please let me know. But if you are an MSP that is interested in being, you know, on the front lines and being an insider and getting bashed over the head with these new features, please let <laughs> me know because I could put you in touch with Taylor and Kyle and we can get you in that community where you can start testing these new new experiences. Thank you.